Hey everybody, so last year I got a number of requests to do more videos where I just focused on a certain type of book and made recommend recommendations in that genre. So I'm going to try that out in 2023, and today I'm here to recommend some 2023 historical fiction. I hope you're ready for your TBR to explode. Let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. Today, I am here to talk all things historical fiction. The weather is sunny and bright. It's cold as heck, being honest. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm getting books onto your TBR that you want to read. So um, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try to do more videos throughout the year. So you tell me what you think about it in the comments down below. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your good reads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore or have your library get you a copy as soon as possible. So we're going to start with the only book that I think is currently out. I think it just came out or is coming out very, very soon. And that is Veronica Olmi's Daughters Beyond Command, translated by Alison Anderson from the French Out From Europa editions. So this book play takes place from May 1968 through May, I think, 10th, 1981, where there's a historical election that occurs. And um, it follows the lives of three sisters through that time period. Now, in the 1968, the book, um, the description says that France is in a bunch of turmoil, and then it sort of follows through this historical election, which I'm going to learn a ton about French history as I read this book. I am absolutely sure of it. Um, we have the oldest sister who is is, wants to be an artist in Paris. The middle sister sort of goes between this life of like the a bougie life and a very simple Catholic life in the country. And then the youngest sister is, I, I don't know exactly what it means when it says this. It says, Mariette, the youngest, learns the secrets and silences of a dazzling world. I don't know what that means, but I want to know. I think that is so intriguingly said. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about this one. I don't know a ton about French history from this time period. And I also love when they sort of just take this family saga through a historical period. There you go. Veronica Olmi, I know that I look at her name and I go, I know in French it probably sounds so beautiful and I am absolutely butchering it. Um, Daughters Beyond Command, translated from the French, 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 French by Alison Anderson out from Europa. You're getting Russell and all his glory here today. So we're going to go from France to Australia with um, The Sun Walks Down by Fiona McFarland out from FSG. This comes out on February 14th, um, and it is set in the late 1800s, Australia. Um, it starts at a family sort of homestead away from town, very, very, very rural. Um, we have a mother who's at home and a young son. I think he's like six years old. A dust storm comes in and the young boy goes missing. And what happens is we get the sort of the history and the people of this town told in a story as they search for this child. Um, the sisters, who he has many sisters, I think he has four, um, are all in town at the time that he disappears at a wedding for a young girl in town. The father is somewhere, I can't remember exactly where yet um, in my brain, but sort of they're all gone. So it's just the mother at home when the boy goes missing and it uh, brings it all together. I have started this book and this is what I will say about Fiona McFarland's writing. In pages, you are drawn into uh, 1880s Australia. She paints such a vivid picture of place that it is astounding how quickly you are right there. And I um, I have started this one, so I will say I was turning the pages. Um, I just, it's so good. It is so good. So The Sun Walks Down by Fiona McFarlane out on February 14th from FSG. Okay. From uh, France to Australia to 1950s New York City, we um, are going to do Such Good Friends by Stephen Greco. This is a um, imagination of the friendship between Truman Capote and Lee Radswell. Lee Radswell is the sister of 
Jackie Kennedy, I believe. Yes, Jackie Kennedy. And this is a reimagination of sort of that, that friendship between these two people. You know, I love a book that is the reimagination of any author's lives. And Truman Capote had more to give when it came to drama and excess and just plain old fun. Um, and it follows, I think, through two decades, the 50s, the 60s, the 60s into the 70s. So it's really maybe three decades. Um, and their relationship. This is out from Kensington Books. It comes out in June of 2023. Um, and I'm going to say the only thing about this book that doesn't make me excited is this cover. I do not love this cover. However, I just love the idea. It just, I feel like if you liked The Editor by um, Rowley, you're probably going to like this. Sort of that feeling where you just get to know these people and yeah, I'm really excited about Such Good Friends. Um, a novel of Truman Capote and Lee Radswell by Stephen, Stephen Greco um, out again from Kensington Press, June 2023. Okay. Next, we're going to go back to, to France, but 17th century French, France, uh, with The Disenchantment by Celia Bell. Um, when I described this book on my Instagram, I basically said, if you're looking for a 17th century French lesbian romance with a touch of murder, this is the book for you. And I think that's enough to settle it, sail it. But at the, uh, the main character is a, a baroness. Uh, when her husband is home, she is very much taking care of her husband, her house, and her children. However, when she, he is away, she leads a much more liberal lifestyle. I love the way the book puts it. It says, um, one of salons and grand houses, forward-thinking discussions with female scholars, and at the center of her freedom, Victoria Rose de Bourbon, Mademoiselle de Conti, the andro androgynous, self-assured aristocrat who steals Maria Catherine's heart and becomes her lover. Victoria poses everything Marie Catherine does not, confidence in her love, and a brazen fearlessness in all that she is willing to do. But then there's an act of murder, and you know, everything has to go sideways, and I am here for it. So that's The Disenchanted by Celia Bell. This comes out from Pantheon Books in May of 2023. Okay. Next, and finally, and last but certainly not least, we're going to go to 1950s Philadelphia with The House of Eve by Sidiqua Johnson. This is out from Simon & Schuster. It comes out at the beginning of February, so February 7th. Um, and this is the tale of two different um, young women. So hold, I'm going to ha have the book help me. So we're in 1950s Philadelphia. 15-year-old Ruby Purcell is on track to become the first in her family to attend college, in spite of having a mother more interested in keeping a man than raising a daughter. But a taboo love affair threatens to pull her back down into poverty and desperation that has been passed on to her like a birthright. Eleanor Quarles arrives in Washington, D.C. with ambition and secrets. When she meets the handsome William Pride at Howard University, they fall madly in love. But William hails from one of D.C.'s elite, wealthy Black families, and his parents don't let just anyone into their fold. Eleanor hopes that a baby will make her finally feel at home in William's family and grant her the life she's been searching for. But having a baby and fitting in is easier said than done. With their stories colliding in more unexpected in the most unexpected of ways, Ruby and Eleanor will both make decisions that shape the trajectory of their lives. So, we're in 1950s Philadelphia, two very different stories, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. So that's The House of Eve by Sadiqua Johnson, out again on February 7th from Simon & Schuster. So this is a nice v variety of historical fiction. Um, I, you know, I'm saying historical fiction because, you know, some of them are just stories set in the past. Um, but I think that they all seem like historical fiction in a way to me. And I am here for them all. So there you go. That's five books that I am sure you are going to want to read. Hopefully I don't drop them. As always, if you're a return subscriber, know that I could not do this without you. I really appreciate you watching, commenting, subscribe, and all of that kind of stuff. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe, click the button. I'm My goal is to eventually, hopefully in the next couple months, hit 13,000 subscribers. I would love that. Watch the videos, recommend them to your friends, and all of that. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everybody.